Hello, we are going to be talking about uh, devices in AIX. <clears throat> um, and again, we are uh, we are going through the AIX administration book, uh, certification book, uh, version 5.3. Um, we do, you know, current, currently 7.1 is, is out and majority of the majority of corporations are still just starting to install six one so don't think that lot you know a lot of this does not imply um i'm supporting these i'm supporting this operating operating system five three six one and we have, i don't know i don't think we have any system which are at seven yet um, maybe we'll start doing seven but um these are basic aix so it applies to uh to you know to all these versions uh, if there's any slight variation maybe very slight but uh, i i doubt it okay device configuration like we mentioned before um the devices in uh in part one are all in the odm um, when the system boots up the system discovers uh, what hardware is uh, currently installed on on the server or on the system and it builds uh, it builds the information and puts that information inside of uh, in the ODM um, and any time that you feel want if there if you want to scan the system and see if there's any uh, additional hardware that's been added uh, many of the other many of the other AIX and Linux systems were not able to do this uh, and AIX been, you've been able to do this for a very long time uh, all you have to do is uh, CFG MG MGR okay you can do a minus V for visual if you want and what this command does it goes through and scans and sees uh, if there are any additional hardware attached uh, attached to the attached to the system and if there are it would discover it configure it install the necessary drivers for it so that so that you can use it use that device okay so we will be going um, over a couple of commands here um, one one of the commands uh, is called lsdev so basically this command what we basically do is list the devices and when I you know when I say device I am referring to the physical hardware uh, a hard drive network interface <clears throat> uh, and actually uh, they could be also pseudo meaning uh, you know non non physical uh, for example for example you have uh, an Ethernet adapter, okay? If I do a lsdev uh, minus cc adapter, this command lists all of the adapters which are currently installed. The capital C refers to currently installed. The lowercase c is uh, telling you what you know what type of adapters I want to list, what type of uh, devices I want to list. So if I hit enter. So this basically gave me a list of all of the in, uh, all of the adapters on here. Now this is a you know a home system, so you don't see uh, you don't see the typical uh, devices that you'll normally see. So many in many cases you will see uh, multiple interfaces on the server, network interfaces. I'm referring to. You will see an Ethernet adapter, which uh, which is an actually a virtual adapter, uh, which actually points to other physical adapters. Um, the the first the so the first column over here tells you the actual device name, ENT ENT zero FDA zero. Uh, this second column over here gives you. The look uh, if it's, if it's available or not okay and this can be a little bit tricky also depending on what type of device it is 
Um, for example, if your if your disk drive goes to a defined mode, you know that's a good indication that uh, that disk is bad. Uh, this is actually the location of it. Um, we don't really understand that too well, but in uh, but in sometimes you can actually disk actually can be used to uh, to to figure out uh, certain things, uh, like which which devices are related. And there, and then there's a and there's a the description about that device on the last column. Okay. Now I was saying physical and also sometimes non-physical. So these are some of the physical. So when I say non-physical, uh, I'm just gonna do a pipe and grip en. Okay. And this is uh, this is what I wanted to show that there is a non-physical adapter, okay, inter interface, standard Ethernet interface. So this is the adapter, and this is the interface that, that gets configured. So it's, these, are, these two are linked. So even, even when you see the, um, the, the, the location, the location are the same, okay? So, so sometimes there is, you know, non-physical like this right here, internet, network extension you know this is uh, i uh, inet zero this is not a physical adapter okay this is a device but it's not a physical device okay so ls device basically lists every device that is on this system okay uh, the process device the memory um, lvm root vg um, sys zero uh, system planer, uh, all of the physical devices, um, logical devices are all defined here. <clears throat> uh, LS, uh, let's see. So n another category is uh, LS Dev CC disk. Okay, so this basically lists list what type of uh the, the disks that are attached to it and on this small system we only have two disks uh so basically uh so you in, in a larger system you know you'll have uh, maybe 50 40 100 disks attached to the server uh depending on the path all oh, paths also okay uh next command we will uh we will look at is a lscfg command okay this basically also displays some critical information uh about uh, about the device um so for instance if you need to replace a hard drive um you call an ibm support and you said you need to replace this hard drive it failed and they'll ask you okay what type of hard drive is it well you can say it's a 16-bit scuzzy disk drive you need to give it actually some kind of a part or what they refer to as a FRU number. So if you do a LS uh, CFG minus VPL um, and the disk name, and let's say, you know, HDS0 failed. Okay. Oh, LS CFG minus VPL. Okay, so here is the output of the command, uh, and it gives some basic information about about this device. Now it is nice that it's nice to know how to run the command, uh, but it's nicer when you know what the command actually gives you, <coughs> and be able to find uh, find information that you need. You know where the information is stored. Okay, for a disk, some of the information which is important over here is the location uh if you if you still are supporting a little bit uh, old school systems maybe power four maybe power five and you're not using a vio server you're still using disk you know from the uh from the raid on on the server uh, you need to know what's what this divide is you need to know how to read and understand this um Okay, and you know this tells you it's a nine gig nine gig hard drive. Uh, this is the fruit. Typically, this is the information that the IBM 
uh, support person or whatever person that's that uh, that's supporting will uh, will want to to find out the what hard drive that they need to give you in order to replace it. Um, and some of these bottle and bottle in from bottom information, I forget which one was it that actually gave you the level of the firmware, okay, or the microcode on the hard drive. Now, uh, now sometimes you will need to update that, so you need to know where to get it. And if you go read through the documentation, and uh, it will actually tell you it's it's probably uh, I think it's probably Z1. Uh, so this is the firmware level on it, and you and you can download the firmware level and update it. And this in this field will get updated. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, to another device, for example. Uh, what if you need to know you're working on a network issue, and the network engineer uh, asks you, "Hey, what's the MAC on that NIC?" Uh, they're trying to figure out what's going on. They he, he requests you the MAC. Well, how do you how do you get that? So LSCFG can get that information for you. So LSCFG VPL ENT zero. Okay. So again, this uh, oh we were talking about the location. Okay. This this basically means a planar. Okay, and this is the location of it. Z one A four. This one is not that easy to. Uh, this is pretty. Uh, Z1 uh, A4 and if I do uh, if I do the second one second disc uh, the second disc would be A5 okay so that tells me that zero is the first one and and uh, and one is the second one so when you go to replace that disc uh, you should be able to figure out how to do it and there's and there's actually another way uh, that I will show you how to, how to do that which is even uh, is more niftier than this. Okay, again, here's the device name. Here's the location of the device, and this is the type of device it is. Um, so for the network MAC, the MAC is this, it's right here. It's a network address. And if you need to know the worldwide, num uh, the worldwide name of a fiber adapter, it will be the same thing. So you would do a LSCFG VPL space uh, FCS0, and uh, and it will also refer to as a network address, and that will be the worldwide name of that uh, of that device. Okay, um, so so these are the examples for the LSCFG. Uh, let's look at the next command, uh, LS attributes. <clears throat> And I I've been running this command and you know for a long uh, for for you know for some time and I never understood what the true and false mean and I never bothered to figure out or you know so one time I did get curious and I did want I did uh, start to do some research on it and I figured out that these true and false basically means that if the val if the valuable if the value is configurable configurable meaning again that if it's changeable okay some device information is hard coded and it cannot be changed and some of the some of the configuration can be changed if the configuration is changeable they'll the value the, it was it will give you a true okay so if we want to change the the media speed to 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 uh, to 100 uh, to 100 megabyte full duplex or if you have a gig adapter it'll be a thousand uh, full duplex uh, so you can change that value and any one of these values all these values are are changeable okay um, so here you know these are basic uh, configurations that you can change on the adapter for uh, for tuning purposes. So LS attributes basically has uh, some configuration uh, that uh, and that that can be modified in order to uh, 
uh, to tune that uh, the device uh, any any better. So let's let's look at um, uh, LS attributes for um, HDisk zero. Okay, and again, you know these are these are some of the values uh, that can be changed. Um, you know, of course, the size cannot be changed. That's why you have a false over here. Okay, reserve path. If you're doing uh, uh, a cluster system, you can set this to a no reserve, no reserve policy. Uh, Q depth is uh, is also one one of the values that can be changed on a you know uh, on a SAN attached device uh, to, uh, to for to you know to better the performance on the device. Uh, and you we can look up the details of you know uh, of of these uh, of these parameters that uh, removing the devices are very simple okay um, just because you remove a device that doesn't mean you just removed it and you you can never get it back again okay that that was kind of the beauty of uh, uh, of AIX was uh, that you can you know let, let's let's say if I want to delete this HDisk one well HDisk one is active and I can't delete it until I you know unmount it and I remove everything and then I can delete it um, so so I won't bother doing that at this time so let's let's pick another device uh, that you know that I can delete. Okay. Uh, how about the CD? CD-ROM. Uh, it's a good device to delete. <laughs> I'm not using it right now. So LS Dev CD zero. Okay, then put it in the defined mode. If I want to remove it completely, minus D, delete it. Okay, so if I do a LS dev, look for CD, CD0, it's gone. It's not here no more. Well, I want it back. All I gotta do is run the config manager. You know, I I got some servers that I'm building today, and um, and the uh, San administrators was fussing about. Uh, he didn't, you know, which one was more priority. Blah blah blah. You know, have too much work. You know, welcome to my world. And uh, so finally, he did the uh, allocation of the storage. And uh, so today I'm gonna go on the blade servers and discover the discover the devices and then uh, and then finish up my uh, server builds. Okay, okay. So it took a little bit time because it went through and installed the device 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 that it, that it didn't have. Here it is. Okay, so don't be afraid of it. You can delete disk. You can delete whatever you want. Uh, pretty much, um, I guess I shouldn't say that. Whatever you want, um, physical devices we're talking about here. That if if you know if there's a problem with any physical device, you can remove it and add it back. Okay, removing the device, deleting the disk, you know, it does not harm anything. You the, the data on the disk will uh, is still intact. And uh, it's it's not it's not gonna get corrupted or anything like that. Okay, that's it for uh, for this lecture. Um, go ahead and continue uh, uh, continue reading through it. Uh, there's uh, there there are other commands. Um, for example, um, uh, ch dev, uh, and those those uh, those at, those can those values that we talked about that are that are changeable uh, above. Uh, can be changed with the change dev command, okay? And and there's different versions for different type of devices. Like there's a, a change PV command, 
specifically for some attributes for a, for 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 a physical volume. So uh, so it's very simple uh, to 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 make to, to make the changes. Um, okay, thank you. Bye bye.